All right. Hey, hey Megan. Well, first, thanks for doing this with me. I appreciate it. Of course. Thank you so much for scheduling and actually having it work out. <laughs> yeah, that's, it's, been a, it's been a crazy, crazy so, month. Yeah, it's surprisingly hard to get folks, uh, to get other painters, even in, you know, the time of COVID, to be able to commit to an hour, three weeks in advance. And you'd be surprised how many people I'm still talking to three months later. So, oh, geez. Well, I, have a, I, there's, I, I understand that. I I, I I totally understand too, but there's this general feeling that oh everyone has all the time in the world right now because no one can really go out or do much, you know. Yeah. Um. But yeah, scheduling is still scheduling. Oh. So could you tell us what we're painting today? Because you sent me a bunch of images of like a marsh and it looked like you were in a train yeah. or a car going over tracks and you kind of took the shot. Yeah. So, um, it was actually on my way to New York city on our, uh, New Jersey transit here. Oh, is it last year? Maybe. Okay. And there's, um, this, what park would this be? It goes right through, um, oh, I forget the park. Uh, Jeez, I forget the park, but it's like a marshy, right. salt marsh, brackish um, area, and it was foggy, and the train was going, but somehow it just, that movement created even more of a little interesting clip, so I just, I love marshes, I don't know, especially foggy ones, I don't know, just, I love that. Yeah, so. this image looks a lot like, um, because of all the tears of green, and, yeah. um, you know, the really uh, intense, bright gray sky. It looks like a lot of places in Ireland. Yeah, yeah, it, have, it, it does. Ha have you been to uh, Western Europe at all? I have not. Okay. I, have not. I, would, I would love to. Yeah. And, but I have not been, not been out that way. Oh. Okay, so... I'm trying my best to keep this as minimally green as I can. And I don't actually have blue. You don't have blue? No. I am using um, like a phthalo-ish green and okay. a Payne's gray in order to get my blues. And I'm painting on like a really intense orange surface. And hopefully it just becomes blue. Because one of the temptations I always have when doing like a really dark landscape, yeah. um, something that's kind of grayed out with just a few pops of really intense color, is to blue it out. And I don't know, maybe it's just the way that I see things, but I go way too heavy with blue, way too quick. And I'm trying my bestest today to keep everything <laughs> warm. Well, I think I probably go sometimes too heavy on the darks. Yeah. Just the dark browns and well things like that. But I always I'm, wind up going back that way. So Yeah. <laughs> it's inevitable. Now, would you consider yourself a tonalist? Uh, I really, um, if I could get away with doing that all the time, I guess I would. Okay. I don't know. I don't I guess a mix between a tonalist and an impressionist. All right. Like kind of a mixture in there. But I, I love tonalism. I'm not as exact at, like as the older tonalist. You know, I like to be a lot looser. So, you know, I I mean, I love I don't know if you know uh, Dennis Sheehan or Sheehan. He's um Sheehan. I I think I might have seen some Something of his He's on the Graham, right? The yeah, he, he is. He's also, he does like, a, he did like a couple of Facebook live videos. Okay. 
and he he does a lot of teaching and and demoing and I've never he's, seen he's, a Facebook live video. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it was it was really interesting how he kind of just he didn't even think about it, and I think I got so caught up and I didn't realize I could I didn't realize I could take away and not just add paint. Mm -hmm. And I don't yeah. know why I didn't think about that, but I, I don't think most people do. Um, I I know that I I've been at this for about uh, nine years now, uh, a little over nine years, and I still have to re remind myself of things like that all the time. Yeah, I I really love the. I guess it's uh, reduction. Is that the right word? Am I getting that right? Um, I don't know. I think. Where you take away? Yeah. The reductive process. And then using paper towel. Yeah. I love using paper. I, I was like, wow, we can use paper towel? That's interesting. I just, I, before I saw some of his videos, I, I just didn't even think about it. Uh, so I didn't, I didn't go to college for art. Mm -hmm. Um. So I didn't learn those like basics of oil painting. I had to learn them on my own. And thankfully the internet is here. For yeah, that, for that. I did not, uh, I, I'm self-taught as far as painting goes too. Although I did go to art college. I went for uh, anatomy and drawing and sculpture. Nice. And I was adamantly against painting anything. So you didn't you didn't paint at all? No, I I did what I had to do. Um, there was like a foundation class yeah. that everyone had to take, no matter what, and I kind of um, bullshitted my way through those and used some of my uh, I guess charm <laughs> when I was still a teenager. I mean. <laughs> Any charm that I did have is is now gone, but I I, I did my best to uh, not do too much as far as painting goes w when I was at school in uh, the mid nineties. What was it? What was your aversion to painting? What was your reasoning at the time? Oh, I, I thought that it was just well too simple, and I couldn't. Um, wrap my head around doing something uh, and then not being able to keep reproducing it. I really like the um, the aspect of mold making and then producing a lot of a piece that you spend time on. Okay. And, I, I, you know, I, I just took the form better. My eyes are really sharp, but... I don't really see colors, I think, the same way as other people. So, I'm, oh, crap, I just moved the camera. Off. Okay, there we go. I'm a little bit colorblind. Just, are, are, are you? Yeah, just more like the deficient type where I can see everything, but, but on those tests yeah. that, you, that you take, I, I don't, like, I'm not anywhere near 100%. So, that, that, that's so interesting because your work to me is so colorful. Yeah, well, I use uh, a very limited palette and I have sort of taught myself uh, what tends to go with what. Okay. So it's it, it's more science than I like to admit, but... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Hey, you gotta, whatever gets you there, you know? Yeah. I don't think there's one way to do anything. It it would be nice to um, just be able to pontificate and go off on color tangents and speak about color theory with other people. I I really can't because at some point I'm just like, yeah, well that red is red. <laughs> I mean, it's different from purple, but purple is not red. And that's yeah. <laughs> the, 
I think I agree. I agree with you. I'm not a. I think the, 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 I spent one year in college and I was a fine art major. Yep. And I started out with, you know, the drawing classes. And my one thing was like, I just don't want to do color theory. I just want to go right to the painting. Hmm. And I, I, that was like, I, and I, I never made it that far. I dropped out, but that was like my, and obviously I think it would have been helpful for me, yeah. but I just didn't want it. I didn't want to do it. I thought it was going to be boring and we're just going to make charts and that's going to kill me. And I, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't want to do it. Hmm. Yeah, I, I find most um, most kind of abstract study of things rather dull myself. I, I sort of need to be participating in it or else I get um, really antsy really quick. And I taught myself at first out of uh, like art magazines. Okay. Uh, when I first landed in New Orleans and decided I was going to sell paintings out on the street like a crazy person. I don't I, think that's crazy. That's well, pretty cool. It, yeah, it's, it's not crazy until you experience a few days of it and then <laughs> you realize how absolutely maddening it is and how, you know, you're missing something if you keep going back for it. So, I learned most of my early techniques from magazines, and I only studied the photos because I couldn't stand reading um, the text and people okay. speaking about what they were doing. I found it so uh, unbearably pretentious most times <laughs> that I would just flip through and flip through and flip through when I went to these bookstores and find the images and do like a what's different test between the two um, photos, like the in progress photos. And then yeah. I would glean, you know, just from the images what the people were doing. And I went and I did that sort of thing for a good three or four years before I got to the point where um, I could stomach actually reading about the process. Yeah. So for me, it was all visual, like read up front. I have a, I have a hard time reading and then you know, um, going from the text to actually what you need to do. Like, I have to see it being done in yeah. action and then do it myself and then I get it. Like, I, I have a hard time with art books that describe the steps or just show still shots. That doesn't really work for me either. Because it's just, I need to see it um, be done Yeah. in a way. Yeah, well, I mean... I think, in general, most people get more out of experience than they do out of abstraction in, you know, written form. Yeah, for sure. Now, what do you, what do you consider yourself? Do you consider yourself... Oh, jeez. <laughs> or you don't want to be put in any, any labels or care? Uh, I... I... I just kind of feel as though I'm still um, learning how to do all of the basic stuff still. Yeah. And I, I mean, I have had a kind of a funny conversation, kind of a lighthearted late night conversation with other artists that were half in the bag, you know, about <laughs> what I could call myself out at yeah. markets and shows that I was in. And, um, came up with distillationist distillationist yeah which was kind of a weird um, mishmash of um, different painting sentiment but 
essentially what I do is I take a perfectly good image and I uh, completely screw it up by minimalizing all of the most important parts. And then I just add in whatever I want on top of it to sort of try to reintroduce life into it. And it was, you know, partially... Um, Uh, my friends joking around with me and uh, taking the piss out of what I was doing. <laughs> but I sort of went and I thought more about it. And yeah, I, I think when I'm able to, maybe 30 or 40 years from now, actually um, sit down and think about what I was doing over a longer period of time, then I might be able to uh, give myself like a baseline and okay. I could maybe describe that uh, fuzzy notion of distillation as I'm a little bit better, but right now it's still all just kind of horseshit floating around in the ether. I, I think it's a lot easier for other people who are art historians. Yeah. And to, like, after we're gone, maybe 100, 200 years, look back on what everyone was doing. Yeah. Come up with their own term and just use that. And then our descendants will explain to themselves, oh, wow, my great 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 grandmother Megan was a blank. Who knew? <laughs> yeah. And yeah. then they probably won't think it about it again their entire lives. Yeah, I think that's that's true. Like I don't think anybody really called them. I guess the impressionists kind of called themselves that, but I'm not not quite sure. Yeah. I mean. I, I think they probably called themselves a bunch of other shit, too, that <laughs> no one really talks about. Okay. I'm, trying, I'm starting to go a little heavy here with my pellet knife. Oh, I really like scraping stuff out. Yeah. I, I love creating texture with the knife. And then I also... Um, I have a heart... Like, I know there's a lot of people that can get... Uh, you know, a lot of good texture with brushes and stuff, but I tend to not use enough paint unless I'm using the palette knife. Yes, I'd say that's basically true for myself as well. I have a tendency to only load the brush with what I feel I need for a particular spot, and then I will sort of drag slash dry brush on yeah. top of it. Okay. So that's a little Oh, man. <laughs> I just kind of backed up a little bit from it and I thought I was dealing a lot more with the gray in the image. Oh, man. I, I think mine is a lot greener than it should be. It's, it's there's nothing wrong with green though. Are uh, you? What is it? What is your? What is your take on? Like, I I, I, I would like to always minimalize the amount of green I use because okay. green that isn't moving is a little disturbing to me. I like it like I like to see green move in nature, and yes. it makes sense when it's part of a living system and when there's life already in it. But green that's just kind of still dead green is a, it's a little funky for me. was it was it you who said you didn't use green for a really long time was that yeah you? okay yeah uh, i i mean i I've, I've definitely said it before you know I've, I've complained to a number of different uh people and sources that green is a disgusting color for <laughs> disgusting people and here and then, I am. I'm, I'm sending you an image full of green. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I think it's great. I, I like it when 
the people who paint with me uh, send me things that I would never normally paint because I either have an aversion to it, either the subject matter um, or the, the palette, you know, the general color scheme. And I just, uh, the other day, did a beach scene from Squamacate Beach in Rhode Island okay. with uh, another painter that I actually went to the Lime Academy with, uh, Sheila, and she also does cityscapes, and she sent me like two or three cityscapes and then one beach, like a summertime beach, and I just said, oh, I, <laughs> I never want to paint this beach thing, so I have to. I, I have to see if I can pull it off. And we did that one, and I think I should be releasing that one tomorrow, actually. I, I, I really have come to enjoy actually painting and having conversations while I work with people. So at first, doing this was more of uh, an experiment in content, just okay. to see uh, what would happen if I put some videos up of someone other than myself painting, you know? Yeah. And it's it's sort of become something a, a lot cooler, which I like. That's awesome. I understand your aversion to the beach. I live right on the Jersey Shore. No, oh, re yeah. re no reference to the TV show. Um, yeah. And so every, everybody just wants beach paintings. You know, that's what they want here. I'm like, really? It's kind of, I find it boring to paint the beach, but that's yeah. just me. <laughs> that's just me. Well, I have been traveling now for so many years, and I've seen most of the landscapes that the landscape painters on social media are painting. I, I see all these places. I see the national parks. And I've been able to form an opinion about the places that people are painting. And I know now why people paint some of the places they paint, because right next door or directly across from what they're painting is absolute trash. <laughs> or it's like a funky campground with a bunch of dumpsters. Yeah. Or it's like a cliff that runs off and then becomes like disgusting ranch land with um with cow eaten grass you know yeah um, where where are you now i'm actually at a friend's place in tennessee kind of between nashville and knoxville and it was another family that we met on the road who um he uh the father slash husband uh, did some kind of um, tech job, so he's able to be on the road, and I, um, you know, am doing this painting thing, so I was able to travel full time, and a bunch of different families like, sort of um, caravan together at certain points of the year, so we spent holidays and uh, did some fun stuff in uh, Las Vegas with this family and then they moved back to Tennessee to take care of uh, another family member and they got a house and all this property and we just happened to be rolling through and they said oh come on over you can park for a week so that's what we did and the kids get to hang out together and see each other again and it's been a while since my kids have actually seen anyone else they are used to having constant social interactions on the road. Yeah. And with the COVID stuff, uh, it's not like they have friends that they can even, like, in the beginning when everyone was really paranoid, they yeah. were still, like, you could do drive-by wavings at people. Mm -hmm. Or you could see people in, like, very public places outside. And But my kids were just kind of alone, and hanging out by themselves and online for... Um, for several months. And how, how was it being like in the RV 
during all this? Did you were there did a lot of people did it oh, get busier? Did it get it, it was oh it was super laid back. I mean, we were just kind of quarantined in Sedona, Arizona. And just before everything went down, there were um, genuine, like, weird food shortages where we were in Tucson, Arizona. Okay. So we were able to get up a little bit higher, like, away from that I-10 corridor, and things got better. And then they, we were kind of stuck at this one RV resort um, for, like, a good two months. And um, we, we kind of lucked out because it was really nice. And... Then we went directly to um, Idaho and spent time uh, with other people that we know at their motorhome park that they have uh, just outside of Yellowstone Park. We spent the rest of the summer at Yellowstone Park, and we're just heading back down south now. So we have pretty much avoided um, all the social unrest and a lot of the really uh, kind of harder hit areas with COVID just That's by good. the nature of being mobile and being able to move up to places where uh, it really didn't see, you know, really didn't have the same impact. What about Jersey there where you were? Did, uh, did stuff get real for a little while? Uh, yeah. You know, I mean, it was, it was more... Um, I mean, it was definitely, it was definitely we quarantined, but my husband's been working throughout the whole thing. He works at a uh, bicycle shop and okay. he's been, he's been working throughout the whole, the whole thing. No break. It actually got, it's gotten, cause nobody could do anything else. So yeah. they all went and got their bikes fixed and oh, okay. came into the bike shop and started riding bikes like people took their bike out that they had for like 20 years down in the basement <laughs> they needed him needed him to fix it so yeah yeah it that you know he didn't have to not work yeah um you know the kids were they were out of school and virtual learning and then uh i mean i think you know that we had homeschooled and done the RV thing for a while and mm -hmm. so I just said you know what forget this we're going back to homeschooling and um just because they they hated the online stuff yeah and they were they it just wasn't wasn't the same so we just I just said stop doing it and we'll uh we'll figure it out in the beginning of next year what we're gonna do depending on what happens so they're staying out for now. Um, Good. And just going back to our, you know, everybody else was freaking out, like, I don't know how to do this. And I'm like, okay, whatever. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, if you're going to have, I mean, this might be a pretty unpopular um, statement to make, uh, but if, if you're going to have an institution um, like the public education system in the U.S., be so um, divided on yeah. so many different fronts and not really have a cohesive approach to helping kids at all grades and all levels, I think there should be um, a definite certain amount of leeway to decide your children's education for them and not be like prompted to go back to oh, a, sure. into a funny like half week um, schedule that only happens some weeks or to do an online learning where all they do is basically mute <laughs> things and then text their friends and make fun of the teachers and the teachers half asleep, you know, yeah. it, it, going through the motions is not like education. Yeah, exactly. So. And I, and I, and you know, I, I didn't really agree with it as it was. I felt like it was like my only option. Yeah. to get like a break <laughs> yeah. not gonna lie but um and, and i think it was good for them to to kind of see what it was like to do it that way they were like oh yeah we know what that's like it's fine but now yeah. it's we have two half days a week and all this stuff i said what's the point of that you know it just and to have them be in masks all day and 
you know, social distancing. I'm like, they're better at home, you know, like mm -hmm. we'll learn more at home and, and just be better off. And you know what? Most of their friends, like our district, it was, you could do full remote, go in two half days, or, you know, you could, one of the things was you were going to homeschool your kids yourself. So, mm -hmm. and luckily New Jersey is uh, a good state for that because they don't, they're not really strict about homeschooling and checking in and doing all that stuff. Yeah. So it, it's it's a good state to do that. And at any point in time, if my kids are like, oh, I want to go back once this is all over, then it's not an issue. Good. Yeah, I mean, it's one we last had to thing swallow, to... swallow some hard pills sending them into public education because we don't agree with it really at all. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my eldest, who's now 14, she managed to get through four days of kindergarten <laughs> in Louisiana before she was like, I don't want to go back to school. And my wife and I said, oh, okay, <laughs> you're good. You had the experience. Did she did she want the experience? Did she ask you like, oh, I want to try it, or were you yes, just here to try it? Okay. Because another little friend of hers, when she was four, five, maybe, who was at the same RV place uh, in Louisiana, she went to um, like a public school there, okay. and so then my daughter Nora would see her um, come home. And thought to herself, well, why can't I go? Because then I can hang out with my friend at school. Yeah. And, you know, she, she didn't realize that there were separate classes and and that you couldn't just get up and use the bathroom whenever you wanted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's definitely a... Cool stuff like that. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah, I, I like how you've kept everything sort of within the same world as far as um, the gradations of land as it goes back into space. It looks believable, and I think though mine is not quite as believable I can, here. I can see where you're going, though. I can see yeah, where you're. Hopefully, you're I'll I'll just drop the sky in, and uh, it'll yeah, just magically once... make sense. Yeah, I think once you have the sky in, it'll... I tend to do, um, like, a block-in and have things really loose and then kind of start from uh, either the top down or the bottom up. And, you know, I have all these uh, weird rules that I've created for myself since okay. there's never any really been any instructors to be looking over my shoulder telling me that I'm fucking up, you know? <laughs> that, I think that's not how you do things. I think that's almost better, though, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I, I think for the other people who are self-taught, um, I think there's a certain amount of superstition that you just naturally have um, in your uh, approach yeah. To making a painting. And you have... I, I know that I have little things that I need to do in order to feel as though, like, I'm on the right path. And I don't always see other people who have had that specific fine arts education uh, feel the same way. They're, yeah. a, they're a little bit more, like, okay with using more tried and true um, approach, okay. you know. I'm sorry, what was that? You, do, you, you were just do, you, do you find that, um, do you find that people that have more of that art school education are trying to say something with their work instead of just making the work? Or do you, I mean, I guess we, it's, it's landscape painters don't really do it that way. That's more of a, but. Mm. Well, 
I think naturally there is more that can be read into a figurative work or a still life work as far as concept and um, kind of abstract content. Yeah. And I think that um, that the landscape uh, is a little bit more relegated to um, just, you know, worker bees making the honey. Yeah. So to speak. So I think eventually that'll begin to shift again. And there are just, um, there's just so many different uh, people that you can expose yourself to uh, their work. Um, and that statement taken out of context is filthy. So I will apologize to any sense of ears. Um, I, I think that having the ability to uh, to see so many uh, other landscape painters' approaches and work is uh, is interesting. How and do you how, how do you how do you feel? Does it get a little too overwhelming to you ever? Making it or uh, like seeing, seeing other people it. digesting other people's work. Of course, and and it gets um, it gets repetitive, and I have nicknames <laughs> for all the different uh, compositions and pieces that other landscape painters on Instagram do, and <laughs> I can almost predict their next piece sometimes. Really? And what's what's, a, what's oh, yeah. are you gonna share a nickname or are you gonna <laughs> keep that to yourself? Oh uh, well, um, there are a bunch of folks who do what I call the one-two tree punch. One-two tree punch. Is yes. that like the holes in the tree? Yes, it's okay. where they do these um, these landscapes, and they have um, these shapes that are trees. And they denote the tree with only one or two um, negative space sky holes. And okay. I call those one, two tree punches. <laughs> and then there's the mountain majesty uh, folks who, um, you know, paint the basically the same mountain view over and over and over again with the cascading sides and you know, the basic peak uh, composition. And it's, a lot of it's very lovely. Yeah. And, um, but there's just so much of some of it sometimes. Yeah. You know what I mean. No, uh, I, 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 I would like to see a lot of these uh, folks that I just kind of happen upon their work on Instagram. I'd like to see them um, push it and go off slightly different uh, directions too because I think that they'd have a lot of success and um, I guess people just get maybe I think it's the a Instagram little complacent, trap. comfortable yeah. I think it's the Instagram trap too now, I, I, I wasn't going to mention the <laughs> elephant in the room Instagram uh <laughs> thing that, that you've been through uh, with waving goodbye to social media for now but I, I do have to ask was it uh, was it like government agency was it men in black was it direct alien <laughs> contact what got you to the point where you were like I am done with Instagram uh, uh, honestly it turned into a political minefield with everybody and I got annoyed oh okay and i got really you know i don't want to say that people shouldn't express themselves and talk about things but it got to the point where it's like i'm here to promote art and then 
you know, there is bandwagons like, you know, post the black square, do this, and then don't post the black square. You're doing it wrong. And it's yes. like, I couldn't, I, w- I was like, I don't, I feel like no matter what I do, I'm doing things wrong. So I d- I'm not going to participate at all. And then I was trying to just keep it art and the people I really knew and wanted mm-hmm. to follow. And it just, I kept getting sucked into all of that you know in some way or another somebody posted a story or or yeah said something and you know i did i just didn't it was it wasn't good for my mental and emotional well-being mm-hmm. anymore and you know honestly as an artist i was sitting there scrolling and then going oh i should i need to do some more of that or do that or whatever and i i was i was wasting my time scrolling instead of getting to work gotcha so, and, and that was, that's just honesty, you know? I mean, I, I'll admit when I have a, a problem. <laughs> yes. You know? I certainly um, have some video game problems, and I I, I got into it bad in, um, in the beginning of quarantine with this one, like, Western resource collection kind of highway murder game. Okay. It, it just got too fun too fast. And I, I need to keep my distance from video games. And I, I mean, I, I, I know that about myself and I just kind of let myself go with it. And I, I don't have the same kind of um, addiction to Instagram. I've, I've been able to uh, not get sucked in so bad to it and i only use it as a gallery sort of thing i i I don't really post um images of my family or what we're doing or my my breakfast or what my dog (laughs) just threw up so i don't have to worry um about comments about those things yeah it was just basically um an interesting sounding board now that i'm no longer um in an art scene like i'm not on the street in new orleans painting anymore so i sort of wanted to have a constant um feedback loop and i'm i was okay with the dysfunction of the feedback loop (laughs) if if that makes sense yeah no i i I think, you know, for me, it it wasn't like I didn't post. I had been on for so long and it had taken, it took me a lot of work to get to the point I was at. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it was, I'm spending all this time on Instagram trying to reach people instead of making work. Yeah. And I felt like I... I felt and and you know honestly take, taking time away from my kids and oh yeah yeah and, and being course. and being you know present for them you know I'm home all the time but am I really present for them and I really had to look at that and you know I I love art I love painting um and and it's it's a great joy to me but it's it's not something I I'm not obsessive about it, and sometimes I feel like I was like oh you know maybe that's maybe that's an issue we need to be obsessive because we you know we reward the obsessive compulsive like need to produce and that's just not not me and I kind of felt like I was just putting yeah. a lot of pressure on myself that I needed to back away from. That is a hundred percent totally me though. <laughs> I am. Are you co- compulsive? Oh, I, I have all sorts of um, undiagnosed OCD compulsion issues, probably, and I use painting as a way to focus my just my generalized dysfunction. Yeah. Because I mean, I I totally have an addictive personality, so I don't want to get into anything else. I have to be really careful about things that I can just like. Um, pick up and get into, you know? Yeah. <sighs> okay. I think that I'm, I'm 
I'm at a pretty interesting junction here where mm, if I start to add a lot more paint, yeah. it's going to become funky. How are you doing? How, how do you feel your piece is? Wow, yeah. you, yours is a lot softer than mine. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's a lot... Yeah, I, with the marshes, I tend to do... Yeah. Like, right now, I'm trying to create a little bit more texture and not mm -hmm. so line across. Um, Ooh. Well, that's, then, that's kind of what certain parts of mine are. Oh, shit. So, like that, like that, sometimes I feel like I'm not loose enough. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, I, I try to work on that. And I actually, um, not for this one, probably, but I got this handy dandy roller and I've been working with that oh, to yeah. kind of create more textures and kind of just let it happen um, yeah it doesn't always come out but I'm trying the the texture um, part is funny because if I um, start off thinking about all the different areas I want to add texture to, it becomes um, it becomes cacophonous. It's just like it's way too much to deal with. Okay. Um, you, you know how some pieces, when you look at them, the paint is so heavy all over the place, and there's so many, uh, like, very emotional... Um, like big thick lines of paint places that yeah. it's more like screaming than a song. Yeah. That, for sure. That's what I am kind of. Uh, Is that what you're going for? Or you don't. No. Want that's what I don't want. You don't want. And I have the tendency to be able to do that real fast because I think just the way. I naturally put paint and where I pull back in certain areas, it just sort of works out like that. So I'm uh, very cognizant of uh, doing my heavier paint at different stages and trying to keep um, as light and keep as much of the background tone as I can for as long as I can. Gotcha. You, do you, you, you have your background kind of peek out, right? You usually do, don't you? Uh, yes. Sometimes I will just cover the entire thing except for one or two different spots and just leave the background as the color. Okay. Um, so if I'm doing a sunset sometimes, I'll leave... I'll, put down like a really intense light pink and I'll cover the entire thing with paint except for a spot where I need that really, really intense pink from acrylic paint that I cannot get from my oil paint because I won't be able to color mix the proper pink and I'll either make it way too cold or way too hot sort of thing. So I, I, I have to take shortcuts in order to get like a lot of different points of intensity. Yeah. Do, and, you, do you always start with the pink or do you change it up? Oh, I, I always start with a color. Like I'm, oh. I'm not comfortable with just working from a white board or canvas. Yeah. So it's usually either like a Naples yellow or like a neon pink or like a fuchsia color, you know, um, something like that. Okay. And. And it's it's you always do it like in acrylic. Yeah, I. You know what I did for a while? I would paint over old paintings. Yes, I know you. You'd sand a lot down. And I I would sand a lot down, and then. At a certain point, um, you can't just ground with acrylic. And if you are trying to tint your gesso to ground over oil paint, you have to put something else on top of the oil paint if it hasn't cured for, like, so many months. 
yeah. or else you, you're still going to have things that flake off or um, that move on you. So I was using um, some acrylic paint and some white um, uh, oil soluble paint to ground my stuff and what I didn't realize was that depending on the humidity the dry time change uh, like changes drastically and sometimes I would be moving from within a week like the desert all the way up to um, like like over to a swamp or up yeah. north, you know, go from Arizona to Oregon in one week, and I'd have paintings that I used that ground on, and all of a sudden nothing would dry, and everything was really gummy, and it did not work the same in different environments, and it kind of freaked me out because I lost a lot of different pieces that way. And that was with the oil paint? That was with adding really intense uh, acrylic colors okay. to the white um, water-soluble oil in order okay. to make a ground. I, I read about it somewhere online, and I thought I'd give it a try. It worked out great the very first time. It worked out okay the second time. And then I just went for it on, like... I don't know, maybe 12 different pieces I was painting over. And, um, yeah, half of them I just had to throw away because it was so funky. Uh, in, in these marsh kind of gradated landscapes, there's so much you can keep putting into it. Yeah. And... There's a lot of push and pull with this kind of thing, too. I find that the fun part. Do you? Yeah. Or no? um, <laughs> You're like, you made me, you made I, me do too much green. <laughs> yeah, it's, eh, it's more green than I'm comfortable with. But there's enough orange that I, I'm not completely disgusted at this point. I would have liked to have maintain a slightly darker line on the bottom to where the reference photo had like um, a little line of shadow in the grass. I thought okay. that sort of worked well and I had lost some of it along the water line here. And I'll just I think I'm going to put that back in before I call it quits. How close are you? Uh, I have to I have a light on it right now, which I think kind of throws me off a little bit. It's like, yeah. so I'll have to work and see. I mean, I, okay. I'm, I'm okay with it now. Yeah. But, I, you know, I, I'm one too that, like, once I'm a very fat, I, I paint very fast. And if I over, if I try to go back in, like, I, I have a fear of going back in and screwing it up. Yeah. <laughs> I have, like, major major fears about that so i try not to but then recently okay. i had yeah. old paintings sitting here that i that they weren't going anywhere and i was like i'm just gonna experiment and paint over them you mm -hmm. know i didn't even sand them down or anything i was just using more oil paint or maybe they had been sitting for years you know so i was just like there's nothing i could do wrong because it's already a bad painting in my eyes. I'm just going to mess around. Okay. And it was really, really interesting to get over that fear of going back into something and completely changing it. So hopefully I'm in the right direction. Going <laughs> in the right direction with that. Yeah. 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 That's always tough to initiate, um, you know, to go back into something yeah and i yeah i really don't like doing it so like even for my large pieces when i um when i think about doing it like i i want to put aside 
enough time so I can bust it out one day. Like I don't want to be dealing with it for multiple days, or I'm gonna make myself a little crazy. Okay. That's how I feel for sure. Yeah. I I think I'm gonna sign mine, Megan. Yeah, good. Yeah, I think I'm pretty good. I might I might alter my bottom edge a little bit. I'm not sure about it. I have to look at it a little bit more. But now it's so funny. Like I signed the back with a sharpie because I hate my signature. Yeah. <laughs> I hate the way it looks. I haven't mastered the paintbrush. How long did it take you to get your signature down? I, I still don't have it down. Like I just signed it and realized it that I went way too big. And then I messed up, like, a flow to a certain area that I that I kind of liked, so. I love I just, that. I just took a brush and then deleted that. I love the turquoise kind of in the back there, if I'm seeing that right. And the yeah. orange. Yeah. Yeah, the turquoise and the orange. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I saw that in the beginning as something that I could do. And I've been, I was trying hard to be careful to keep that in there, so. That's good. The foreground, I thought I was going to be able to uh, control a little bit more. And then it turns out that I, that I really didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll just, yeah, yeah, I'm not, sh- I'll I'm not sure better. about my, my foreground either right now, so I'm testing it out. Okay, I'm going to try yeah. to sign it one more time, but smaller with... A lighter color. Let's try to think. Oh, that's better. Nice. Be professional, damn it, Chris. Okay. It was so much fun painting this with you, Megan. Yeah. Thank me you too. so much for putting aside some time to do this. Yes, today. thank you. Thank you. I enjoy it. And I'm enjoying watching all the other ones that you're putting out there. It's fun. Cool. So, uh, I know that you have a newsletter. Uh, how else can people find you if they're looking for your work or for you online now that you're no longer on the grub? I am. I have a website, megangrayarts.com, gray okay. with an A. Um, and, yeah, it's pretty much my website. I have a YouTube channel, and I, I haven't posted in a while, but... Maybe I'll try to get more active on there, but it's mainly my website, and to keep up with everything is the newsletter, really. Excellent. That's where I'm sticking my time and energy. <laughs> okay. I'll talk to you later. All right. Bye.